Here's Frank Turek to misunderstand how logic works. I have one observation and two kind of questions. So okay. one, uh, regarding Christopher Hitchens, uh, how you talked about the late great Christopher Hitchens, I consider him a role model of sorts when it comes to debate. Uh, you said of his ideas before that he argues that there is no God, but I hate him. Uh, I've heard you categorize him that way. I think that's a mischaracterization. I think uh, his argument was there is no God, and there are so many contradictory things about the nature of God that uh, no thinking person should believe it. Right? That's kind of what his argument was. Well, here's, here, here, here was my problem with, with Christopher. I don't think Christopher gave an argument for how reality could exist in the absence of God. Why would reality need a God in order to exist? Reality has literally always existed. There was never a time when reality did not exist. This should be obvious because the existence of time depends on the existence of reality. If reality has always existed, why would it need something to bring it into existence? I found most atheists don't have arguments for how reality could exist in the absence of God. What they have are complaints about the way God is running the universe. I don't have complaints so much as I have questions about why, if there is a God, he doesn't seem to follow his own moral standards. I think most Christians would condemn a person who stood idly by while witnessing someone suffering and did nothing to help when they could easily have done so. I don't think they would consider that to be a very godly thing to do, yet it is something that God himself, if he exists, constantly does. There is constant suffering on the planet which God could stop if he's really all-powerful, but doesn't. Yes, and I think his uh, argument fundamentally was the problem of evil, that the, the characterizations and the answers to it are insufficient to explain why the problem of evil exists. Which I understand you have one, uh, being that the more argument suggests that there has to be a divine being, being in order for justice to exist, and it naturally follows in that way. But I, I, I also think that's insufficient as an argument to prove God, and we can get into that in a little bit. Okay, well, hold on a little bit. We, we, okay. we don't have a lot of time, so go to your main question, if you would. So, my main question, I watched you uh, speak with a cosmic skeptic a couple mm -hmm. days ago, yeah. and uh, one of the things that you were talking about was how could logic and thinking uh, that developed through the evolutionary process, how can we trust those ideas? Uh, can you, like, briefly iterate? Right. Uh, cosmic skeptic is a guy by the name of um, O'Connor. Not nice young man from from London. We were in London together, yeah. and uh, this was actually a couple of years ago now. They just put it on the uh, web just a couple of days ago. But yeah, uh, yeah Alex O'Connor's his name, and uh, he was trying to say that we get our moral sentiments from evolution. Yes. I think the problem that a lot of apologists have with this is that it is an explanation for morality, and what they want is some ultimate objective justification. I don't think such a thing is possible. Even if there is a God who dictates morality, there is still no non-circular, objective reason why we ought to follow that God's moral system. Okay. The problem is, if evolution gives us our moral sentiments, that would mean evolution gives us all of our sentiments. Everything we think. I mean, if, if materialism's then we're not really reasoning, we're just reacting. Why can't reasoning be a form of reaction? What else would reasoning be? In, in other words, we're just moist robots. So why should we believe anything is true, including the thought that evolution gives us our thoughts? Well, why wouldn't moist robots be able to carry out logical functions? Machines can do logic like our brains do, so what's the problem? So I'm saying it's a completely self-defeating viewpoint to say that I'm a materialist and everything is made of molecules. That would mean every thought you have is the result of the laws of physics, and if every thought is the result of the laws of physics, so is the thought that you have that every thought is the result of the laws of physics. Again, why is this a problem? If our brains follow the laws of physics, why would that make them unable to discern what those laws are? That seems very counterintuitive to me. It seems like a total non sequitur to infer that something that follows the laws of physics can't understand the laws of physics. Why would an immaterial soul, which I presume Frank believes does not follow the laws of physics, be better able to discern the laws of physics than something that is subject to those laws? Do you, see the, do you see the problem? I don't think there's any contradiction in understanding how the process of it came to be with the validity of logic. or. There, yeah, but there's no way to understand anything if every thought is driven by the laws of physics. Why? How does that follow? Because we're not reasoning, we're just reacting. 
We, we don't have free will. Why do you need free will to reason? Logic circuits don't need free will to carry out the functions of logic. And when I infer something logically, there's nothing that even seems free about that. For example, if I'm presented with an argument in a logical form and I believe the premises are true, I can't help but believe that the conclusion is true if it follows by logical necessity. Let's say you make an argument in the form of a modus ponens syllogism, which is premise one, if P then Q. Premise two, P, therefore Q. An example of this would be, if I live in Paris, then I live in France. I do live in Paris, therefore I live in France. If I believed that the premises of this argument were true, I would not freely choose to believe the conclusion. I would not be able to help but believe the conclusion. The conclusion follows by logical necessity. I wouldn't be able to understand what it would mean for the conclusion to not be true. I would therefore not be free to believe it to not be true. Logical reasoning is not free, so why would it require free will? As, as, as he would say, or as many atheists would say, Christopher Hitchens would say we don't have free will, right? I don't think determinism and uh, the ability to have logic are mutually exclusive, and I, I don't understand why there's a contradiction in that. Well, first of all, as a materialist, what are the laws of logic made of? The laws of logic are ideas, and ideas are neurological processes rather than things. Asking what they are made of is like asking what a baseball game is made of. It makes more sense to ask what carries out those processes, and the answer is our brains, or devices we make to carry out logical processes. So they are concepts with we, which we use to uh, think about what is true. Okay, right? but do they exist independent of human minds? If there are aliens which use the same laws of logic that we do, then they exist independent of human minds. But what they don't exist independent of is brains of some kind. Also, if being subject to the laws of physics means that brains alone can't discern the laws of physics, how can a soul, which is subject to the laws of logic, discern the laws of logic? Or does Frank think that souls are not subject to the laws of logic? A certain phenomenon would exist. The the ability to logic would not necessarily exist, but the phenomenon of nature would still act in the same way that it does if there wasn't a being to comprehend them. I don't know if I followed you on that. Would these laws of logic exist? In, if there were no human beings on the earth, would the laws of logic exist? If there were no brains in the universe to carry out the neurological processes that are the essence of the laws of logic, then no, they would not exist. Now this doesn't mean that the laws could be defied in a universe in which they didn't exist, because defying the laws of logic wouldn't mean anything. The laws of logic describe the limits of meaning itself. To assume that if the laws of logic are just ideas whose existence is dependent on brains means that in a universe without those brains, meaningless statements would have meaning, for example, contradictions could be true, seems like a pretty basic assumption. In fact, it seems rather incoherent. There wouldn't be someone to actually I'm not use asking logic. I'm not asking would there be anybody to think about them. I'm so, saying would they exist? See, I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a good question to ask because I, I think the fundamental nature of reality would remain the same, but there wouldn't be an entity to comprehend them. Right. The laws of logic exist independent of human minds. In fact, if these laws didn't exist, there'd be no way you and I could speak to one another because if you had your own independent laws of logic and I had my own independent laws of logic, we couldn't communicate. The laws of logic that we're using are external to us, they're grounded in God's nature, and they allow us to communicate with one another. The fact that we use the same laws of logic and can communicate with one another just means that our brains work the same way with respect to logic. Logic was invented in part to describe aspects of the human practice of communication itself. It doesn't mean that logic exists independent of brains. We can understand each other, but we can't be sure that the universe as a whole is logically comprehensible. Maybe we'll find some phenomena whose meaning we can't discern because it operates in a way that is incompatible with how our brains work. Maybe we'll find a phenomenon we cannot understand. I, I think that's a misapprehension of the idea. Uh, but... Um or that, why is it a misapprehension? Well, because... And I, how do we apprehend anything without the laws of logic? So, I, I mean, I think logic fundamentally exists, and I think that we're able to comprehend nature through using uh, our ability to uh, see how a cause and effect happen. Right, but Gregory, what I'm saying... Your name's Gregory, right? Did I get yes. that right? Okay. What I'm saying here is, are you a materialist? Do you think everything's just made of molecules? Probably. I'm not exactly sure. I, I would say probably. Okay, if that's the case... 
how, how could you have immaterial laws of logic? How could you have justice? How could you have love? These are immaterial realities. No, they aren't. These are ideas and as such are processes carried out by our brains which are made of matter. Require things in the material world to actually comprehend them. They're concepts like the same way the unicorn is a concept. Okay, they, they don't actually exist in the same meaningful way that material exists, but they are useful in certain ways. Okay, but I'm not talking about whether they're useful or not. And I'm not talking about how we know them. I'm talking about the ontological status in other words, there's a difference between, as you know, epistemology and ontology. Epistemology is how you know something. Ontology is the study of being itself. Why do the laws of logic exist, regardless of how we know them? They exist because we invented them to describe the limits between statements we can understand and statements we can't. If what you're asking is something like, why can't we understand contradictions, I think the answer is tautological. There is, by definition, nothing to understand. Contradictions have no meaning. So I think there were things that we developed as we observe the objective nature of the universe, right? As we... Okay, that's epistemology. Forget epistemology. Forget how we come to know them. Why do they exist independent of us knowing them? They don't. They are contingent upon and inherent to concepts we invented, like meaning and understanding. Before there were any human beings on the earth, they existed, correct? Nope. Uh, the nature of the world existed. So they required things that have the ability to think to use logic. And I think logic is a tool. I don't know if right, it... Let me, let, me, let me just give me one more minute, okay? okay? Forget about how we know them. That's not how we come to know them. My question is, why do these things exist independent of whether or not we know them? See, I, I don't think it's a good categorization of the question. I, 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 okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. I, I, I get it. Maybe we can talk more later. Sure, uh, but things like logic moral obligation, laws of mathematics, consciousness, these things are all independently immaterial entities that can't be explained by materialism and they exist independent of whether human beings exist. How? What would that even mean? If they don't exist physically, if they don't have location in space-time, then what does it mean for them to exist at all? To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.